Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Hulk movie thoughts. So, in, you know, pretty early on we have Stan Lee, you know, drinking a soda that has a drop of the gamma radiated blood in it. You know, but going by that Simpsons episode, I think we can safely assume that no matter how much he might want to, Stanley cannot become the Hulk. I like how this, you know, sort of ramps up the, you know, what the Hulk does and the, you know, I, I like how when we first see him, he's just in shadow, you know, at the bottling plant, you basically don't see him, or at least you, you only very briefly see him, and he's not lit well enough that you can completely make out. You know, it's only like, it's like 40 minutes into it that you really see him, you know, so just about halfway through when he leaps out, you know, from, you know, the smoke. And that's also great, you know, to have this transformation happen, you know, in the smoke, and you just... You know, you see these bits and pieces of it, but you don't completely see the full thing. You know, the film actually does that, you know, pretty much with every... Well, I suppose the only transformation you fully see is the one where he's strapped down. And, you know, that one also has this... You know, that That's the one that doesn't lead into an action scene. And it has this added sort of, you know, that's when it really needs to, you know go back into, you know, he, he needs to turn back into Bruce, and, you know, right after that transformation. But, but yeah, other than that, you know, they keep it somewhat hidden. I love that you, you know, again, in the smoke, you know, you see the hand up on the glass, and then that becomes, you know, grows bigger, becomes the Hulk sand. It feels very Jekyll and Hyde. And you see the, I think it's the, the shoes rip and you know the the shirt and just the whole thing you know and he leaps out and you have that entire scene where he just takes them out you know and you have that brief bit near the end of that action scene where the what's it called the the sonic generators whatever the sonic cannons almost down him you know but because he hears betty you know, he has that, you know, and, and like she says, you know, it's almost like there was something of him in you, you know, because later when he's talking about it, he's like, you know, going over, I, I kind of like the, the PTSD thing as well, how he, you know, for a brief second, it's like the, you know, the water from the shower head is like the Gatling gun and you know, stuff like that. But anyway, you know, when he's talking about it, he has this line about how when he's the Hulk, you know, it's like there's so much noise, he, you know, he can't derive anything meaningful from it, you know, I, I think that's everyone's reaction to hearing Rush Limbaugh's broadcast, but, you know, it, you really believe that he is really in there underneath the Hulk, you know, and the, and the Hulk is basically this, you know, big thing of pure muscle with the mentality of a toddler. You know, it's like something is bothering me or something is making noise so I must yell at it. You know, like the, during the lightning storm. I kind of like how it might be Thor causing the lightning storm because maybe he doesn't, you know, either because he is like looking for the Hulk or because he is like, you know, I don't know, I guess by now, when Thor has come out, you know, there's less room for speculation about this than before that. But hey, we don't know exactly when this is taking place in relation to when the events of Thor take place, you know. And yeah, and it could also be that he's hiding Hulk from, you know, 
General Ross and all that. But yeah, so, you know, she, you know, yells, and, and he's like, you know, he sort of recognizes her, and he brings up those two things, that, and he tosses one of them into one of them, and then he jumps and stabs the other of the sonic cans. I you know, quite like that. It is a, you know, one could argue that the film does present, you know, in, in that it has some of the similar, somewhat of a similar problem to Iron Man 1 and 2, that, you know, the hero, or, you know, yeah, the comic book character that the film is titled after, excuse me, seems unstoppable, excuse me, although with Hulk, it is arguably, I mean, the thing is, it's not so much that he is this, you know, I mean, the, the fact that he might be unstoppable doesn't make him, like, a boring hero, it makes him a potentially really terrifying villain, you know, because he he is an anti-hero. You, you can't completely depend on, well, he's not going to hurt anyone, he certainly wouldn't kill anyone, because, you know, what's going to stop him exactly, you know? I mean, it, I think in the comics it's like, oh, he's never completely killed anyone because they were, like, afraid of... I don't know, it's been a while since I read Hulk. But, you know, it is that thing of, you know, so him being basically unstoppable. And the scene does still have really good tension, you know, because when the sonic guns come out, you really think they're gonna, that they have him, you know. And then you have the... And, and you know, Blonsky walks up, you know, and, and they have that big fight, you know, and he's, you know, juiced up on the super soldier serum. I know some purists are, you know, complaining about that. I don't know. I don't see the big deal. I, you know, it's it's fine enough that they're, you know, it's it's a tapestry. They're they're connecting these movies even before Avengers. And you know, I don't know. Maybe it's not the best. Well, it is not the best of, you know, connecting the dots. You know, but still, you know. Anyway. He walks up, and, you know, there at the end, and he's like, what? The, is that all you got? You know, in that excellent British way. And I guess Hulk is not a big fan of the Brits. And he just, you know, straight up kicks him in the stomach, and he just flies off and <laughs> into a tree, you know. And you just see how he's just broken, you know, in that hospital bed. And then he, you know, gets up. Yeah, what, sir? You know, yeah, I healed. I, I got better. You know, is, <laughs> and then a little later you see him developing those, you know, like dinosaur, you know, things coming out of his back. You know, and then he gets the Hulk, you know, blood in him as well. And yeah, he's, you know, <laughs> it could become an abomination. You know, wow, that was. You really had to get that word in there, no matter how awkward it would be, you know, because, you know, hey, wouldn't every scientist use the word abomination? And, uh, yeah. I like the character of Samuel Stearns in this film, you know, well enough. I, you know, it is a bit of a tease there at the end with him, you know, supposedly becoming, uh, again, it's been a while since I read Hulk, but Leader, I think is the name of the, but, you know, because, yeah, the film's not going to get a sequel, and, yeah, so that kind of sucks, but, you know, the, the character in general, I like well enough, I, you know, the kind of quirky, socially awkward, you know, scientist, as it turns out, mad scientist, you know, I, I like that, you know, it turns out that he, you know, he had, to, you know, he messed around with the blood, you know, and he's, yeah, he got all that, but, hey, that never, what even happens to that? Do they, like, I guess that isn't even really explained in the film, because, like, Banner wants it, you know, like, burnt? Yeah, he talks about, it, like, burning it, and nothing actually happens. It's just left behind with Samuel Stearns, you know, when the, when they trank Banner, and, the, but, but, yeah, you know, he talks about, oh, yeah, the test subjects, and all the blood, and, yeah, well, he didn't send me very much, so I had to concentrate it, and, you know, to make more, and, yeah, that, 
you know, because that is kind of, you know, that is the big thing that Banner is worried about, you know, other people getting a hold of this because look at how dangerous it made uh, Banner, you know. And, you know, that, I don't know, that, that kind of, you know, that, that also feeds into the, the vibe of Jekyll and Hyde with this kind of, you know, n no one will be able to help me, nothing, you know, th this will never get better kind of thing. I like the ambiguity of that very last shot where he's, he actually brings on a Hulk, Hulk out, and he smiles. So you, you know, you're a little unsure if that means he is, you know, becoming like a more vicious evil Hulk and, you know, giving into that, or if it means that he can now control the Hulk, you know, that's, you know, quite nice. I uh, really like the, the reveal on Abomination as well. You know, again, you have this, you, know, you just see bits and pieces at first, and then, you know, after a little while, you know, again, at first you see all the destruction he's causing. And I think they did a fine enough job, at least, of making it clear that Abomination was worse than the Hulk, more destructive, and more of like, where the Hulk is like TNT, like nitroge nitroglycerin, actually. Don't want to start too much, might blow up, might cause you know, a bit of damage. Basically, Abomination is, I don't know, I guess like a a raging fire, napalm, you know, something like that, just, he's just doing damage all around him, and you just, you gotta stop him, or it's gonna keep going, you know, it's not that you have to be careful around him, like with Hulk, he's already destroying things, and he's just, he's doing it for kicks, you know, and I thought that was also a kind of, I mean, some of these superhero movies have this sort of, when, when, like, a character becomes the bad guy, or when the bad guy you know, in the third act, and you have to have this big climactic showdown, sometimes it does become that, you know, like, wait, what was his plan? Why did he suddenly act this way? With Blonsky, you kind of get the sense, you know, he just wants to have fun, basically, you know, he's, he's a little psycho right from the start, you know, I mean, that he just goes up against the Hulk, and is like, I mean, when he got the super soldier serum, he just walked right up, throw away his gun, and he's like, what, you know, go ahead, you know, and, yeah, so, you know, when he is Abomination, it is just, he just has the power to do this, he would have done this, you know, from right away, I mean, he almost, you know, he, he's running right at Hulk, you know, yeah, a couple of times, you know, he, so, yeah, one thing I did think was a little, you know, when they're at the college, I guess, you know, when, you know, when, when they do the smoke grenades at Hulk and he transforms, I, I thought it was a little bit of a cop-out that, you know, someone jumped the gun and he's like, oh, in three minutes we would have had snipers on the roofs. And it's like, Okay, they the scriptwriter ran into this problem. Of, wait, how are we gonna make this work if the Hulk, you know, if if they let's say they had snipers on the roof, why wouldn't they have you know stopped him? Because it's in this open field, so they have to have someone jump the gun, and it's not like it wasn't even set up. It wasn't like there was some troop that you saw earlier, or it wasn't even Blonsky, was it? I don't. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. It, it's just this uh, this throwaway line to explain, oh, this was supposed to be a surprise, you know, you, you blew it, you know, he just can't keep a secret, it was supposed to be his big birthday party, and you just have this, yeah, you know, it, it's just, it's a fine enough explanation, but it comes out of nowhere, and it is just kind of patching up, yeah, I think I've made my point. I... And the, the final big fight between Hulk and Abomination, you know, you have this, 
you, know, you get this real sense that Abomination could take out the Hulk. That's where it really, he ceases to feel unstoppable. Or, yeah, you know, you have that aspect of it, and it really does feel like he has to, you know, really apply himself to take out Abomination. I'm a little unclear on, is he supposed to be, like, snapping Abomination's neck with his foot? Because, like, Betty is against him choking a bitch. Why? She, it, it was gonna kill... I mean, I get this sort of thing of, like, oh, no, you're better than that. It's this huge monster. You gotta kill it. It was gonna kill you. It just... It's not like he was, you know, if if it if Hulk had killed it and then like gone over towards a soldier and been about to grab him and then she'd yelled no stop or something like that, that would have worked much better, I think. It is of course also the you know it is essentially a you know a popcorn scene. You know, it, it isn't, there isn't anything particularly interesting going on with, you know, like, like thematically, I'd say. You know, you, you just have, you know, that he has to, like, it's, it's the, he's the lesser of two evils going out to stop Abomination, and you just have a big, you know, fight. I like when he uses the two car, the two halves of the police car as sort of boxing gloves, you know. Him being thrown out of, an he out of a helicopter just to, you know, make sure that he has, you know, it's insane, yes, but I've got to try. Yeah, but it does kind of, you know, I'd say they, they put that in just because they thought it would look cool, you know. They wanted him to be dropped out of a helicopter and then the Hulk comes up out of the street, you know. And that is cool enough, but it is kind of a stupid plan, you know. It, it could really backfire. Why wouldn't they just yeah, you know, why Why not land and then induce, um, you know, an episode, I guess. And, you know, it is also a decent enough you know, the thing about how when he finally seemingly gets rid of the Hulk, Hulk, Hulkization, Hulk whatever, he then has to use it, you know, not long after, you know, that it is this sort of, you know necessary evil kind of, you know, it takes a Hulk to stop a Hulk kind of thing, you know. I suppose that more or less covers it. I like, well, yeah, the, the you know, lead-in scene to Avengers is fine enough, you know, with, I, li I like the line, Stark, Tony Stark, you always wear such nice suits, you know, and the, we're putting a team together, who's we, and the, you know, he just furs his brows, like, you know, very knowingly, you know, and that, you know, that was, you know, Tony Stark, that it, you know, instead of just like, you know, I mean, if it had been, you know, Nick Fury in every single one of these, it would have, you know, been a bit much. And this one is also, you know, I, I like the ambiguity of we're putting a team together. It's not help me find the Hulk so that he can be a team member, and it's not we're putting a team together, we'll find your Hulk for you and put a stop to him. You know, it, it has room for both, although, you yeah. know. Judging from the trailers, you know, the Hulk will be a team member and not the villain. So, but, you know, I, I like that they did keep it open at this point, at least. And the, the little, you know, details from the, you know, the, because this came out after Iron Man, and they already knew they were, you know, they already knew they were going to make Captain America, so they have some nods towards Captain America, you know, the Super Soldier Serum and all that. And with this coming out after Iron Man, they could, you know, have S.H.I.E.L.D. and Stark Industries appear, and it's, you know, like the same font, the same sort of 
of, you could really call it a logo, but, you know, of Stark Industries. And they mention S.H.I.E.L.D. and people who watched Iron Man are like, oh, S.H.I.E.L.D., right, like in, you know, and it, it just, it ties them together nicely. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.